Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm so excited to talk to you about letter writing, effective letter writing that is. Full disclosure, I have never written a letter to my government, to my politicians, to any companies until now. This Plastic Free July, um, my friend Coco Shin, I'll leave her channel linked below, she started this letter writing campaign called Letters for Change and I participated on TikTok. So what this campaign was, it was designed to write one letter a day for Plastic Free July. It could be anything. So I wrote to different companies, I wrote to different politicians, I wrote to businesses in my local area, and so forth. Instead of the traditional Plastic Free July where you try to use literally zero plastic. If you didn't know, I'm in the middle of a big move. Well, we're pretty much settled now. I really didn't have the energy to commit to absolutely zero plastic this July because we were in different hotels, we were moving into this house, it was chaos. So of course I reduced my plastic where I could, but this month I definitely focused on letter writing. So in this video, I wanna show you what I learned, what I implemented and so forth because for months, maybe even years, I've been preaching that letter writing is the best thing you can do for the planet as an individual. And I had never done it myself. I was a bit of a hypocrite, but I'm not now. I know how to do it. And I think I was just intimidated at first. I thought it was gonna be hard, time consuming, but it's not. So I'm here to give you all the tricks on how to be an effective letter writer and how to make it a little bit easier for yourself. So first, why is letter writing even important? And that's because our politicians are in office because of us and maybe we didn't vote for them, but they're still in office for us. They're there to serve us. And it didn't really hit me until this plastic free July, but how else are they gonna know how to serve us if we don't tell them how? And even if they don't listen, it's important to put that spark in their head and plant that seed and hopefully it sprouts into something great. But what's mostly important too is that you encourage your friends, your family, people on the internet to write as well, especially for really, really important issues that need advocated for. Because the more of us that voice our concerns, the more chance there is that they'll listen and implement good stuff. So first things first when it comes to letter writing is introduce yourself. Don't just start rambling off about different issues. Actually say, hey, my name is so-and-so, I'm a constituent of this state, or I'm a regular patron of your business. So it doesn't have to be a crazy long or in-depth introduction, just something simple stating who you are. And then next is to just get to the point. Don't sit, don't talk about yourself for a whole paragraph. Don't beat around the bush. Just get straight to the point. Hi, my name is Emma. I'm a constituent of Ohio, of your district, and I'm here to talk about climate change. And then get exactly to the bill you want passed. Get exactly to the issue in your area. Shut up. And this is pretty much because they don't have all data read emails and be really specific in your subject line as well because they don't have all data even sift through emails. So the ones with the catchy headline and the subject line, they're more likely to read. So this includes being straightforward and using direct language. And if you're a female, you probably know what I'm talking about. We tend to want to come off as like hyper kind. I don't really know how to explain it, but I think if you're a female, especially in like a male dominated work environment, you probably understand where I'm coming from. We typically sort of tend to say stuff like, I'm just wondering if you could do this instead of just saying, you need to do this. You know what I'm saying? So be direct. Don't include all that fluff, all that stuff. Get right to the point and be direct because the more direct you are, the more it sounds like this needs to happen instead of just a suggestion, if that makes sense. And moving right along, this goes right into the next one, which is keeping the language professional. After all, you're not talking to a friend, you're talking to someone in your government or business. This needs to be a professional conversation. But with all that being said, all those first few tips, still be kind. Don't come in guns blazing saying that you hate them or something like that. I don't know. This works more for brands as a compliment sandwich. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but it's like a compliment, the bad news, and then a compliment. So that way it's not coming off as you just critiquing somebody, you saying you hate this brand. It's you saying, hey brand, I really like what you're doing, but I think your packaging could use some improvements. If you do this, I think I, you will get a lot more sales and it'll be a lot more eco-friendly and better for everyone. So kind of something like that. The next piece of advice I have is to leave your contact information. Chances are, if you're emailing them directly, you're already gonna, it's already gonna have your email in it because you're emailing them. If you're using a sort of contact form on a website, it's already gonna have you fill out your email and your phone number. But if there's not that, just sign your email like with a signature block, like my name, Emma, below the simple environmentalist at gmail.com and then my phone number. So that way they know how to contact me instead of them, because especially when it comes to people who genuinely want to reply, if they don't have anyone to reply to, then they're not gonna reply. But this also goes for if you're calling representatives as well, be sure to end your call, your voicemail with, you can contact me at this email and this phone number. Something really important to include in your letters or even your phone calls, I guess, <laughs> is evidence and facts definitely give them to the person this doesn't necessarily go for brands and like packaging suggestions and so forth but if you're wanting a politician especially one who might not be leaning towards believing in climate change then you're probably going to want to provide some facts 
And that, that could be anything from putting a hyperlink or just at the bottom right below your signature block or before your signature block, including some links to some articles. Um, I had to do this once this month. I just left some articles from NASA, from the World Wide Fund, from other scientific organizations for actual evidence and proof of climate change. Too bad it wasn't after the IPCC report. But moving right along with that is provide some action steps. Don't just tell your politicians. Um, for example, I read a letter for my city in Las Vegas about how big of a litter problem there is, especially after living in Japan, one of the cleanest countries ever. Uh, instead of just saying, there's a litter problem, and then sign your name, I was like, hello, there's a litter problem, but here are some suggestions. Some community trash cans, a better recycling system that would encourage a more incentive to recycle and maybe even a money back program, and so forth. I left, I think, four or five examples of ways to fix a litter problem, so that way they weren't just stumped. I pretty much did all the work for them so that way it was very little work on their part to actually implement something. I think this also enforces the idea that you know what you're talking about. Um, it just makes you sound a little bit more professional and very well educated in this area. And then with this also don't forget to include like if you have any questions about these steps let me know or if you'd like more help implementing these feel free to reach out. My next biggest tip is to save templates and emails. For example, I wrote to 10 different golf courses. But if you didn't know, I think I already mentioned it. I live in Las Vegas. This is a desert and we're running out of water. So I wanted to reach out to these golf courses and see, hey, what are you doing to minimize your water usage? Um, and are you considering using AstroTurf in the future to cut out water usage? None of them replied back, but once I wrote out my first email, I just copy and pasted it into a Google Docs or somewhere else I could use it for later and then just copy and pasted it into those other nine emails so I didn't have to write nine emails from scratch. I only had to write one, but then it ended up being 10 different letters. And same goes for email addresses. If you want to write your politicians several times, keep their email addresses on file so you don't have to dig and dig and dig for them over and over again. This saves a lot of time in the future. Next is to just do it. <laughs> That's it. I have pretty much known about most of these tips for my whole life, not my whole life, but I've been writing professional emails in my job for the last four years. I know how to write an email. I know how to get my point across. I had just never done it for something related to the climate. So that's my next biggest tip is to just do it because it's not hard. The hardest part is finding their email address, I swear, because usually I have the right words to say. I'm already passionate about these topics. So once I find that email address, it's so easy to get my thoughts on paper. And even then, the longest I ever dug for an email was maybe a minute or two. The full length of time it took to write one email was no longer than five minutes. So this could be right before you go to work, right before you go to bed. And you don't have to do it every day either, but once every now and then, just to get your voice heard and hopefully get some changes made. And the next tip, similar to that, is to spread the word. Encourage your friends, your family, people of YouTube to write letters as well. Because like I mentioned in the beginning, the more people that are writing, the more voices that are getting heard. So I want to say thank you to Coco for finally pushing me to write. She didn't like force me or anything, but this letter writing campaign actually held me accountable, taught me how to write letters, and made me realize how easy it was. And now I feel so inspired to spread the word to you guys. So I hope that this at least inspires one person, maybe more, to write a letter today, tomorrow, soon, and then continue that habit for the future. And then the last tip I have for you is to remember your why. This goes with anything, honestly, zero waste, vegan, low waste, whatever, <laughs> but letter writing as well. Remember why you're sitting down every day to write an email or every week. Remember why you're spending your time writing to Coca-Cola and your politicians who might not even care about climate change. And that's because this stuff matters. Hope has not run out. The thing is, I think so many people care about climate change and saving the planet, having a happy and healthy future, but the thing is people don't know how to take action. So that's a big reason why I made this video is to show you how easy it is to write emails to your people. And just remember that you are actually making a difference. It's really hard when you get an email back from politicians saying almost a direct quote, climate change isn't real. I'm not gonna vote for something or I'm not gonna push something that isn't proven by science and isn't gonna make money for the government. No, I'm joking. But the thing is, like I said in the beginning, I'm still planting that seed. They might not believe now, but there's some sort of scientific study or something that says like, once someone hears something so many times, they finally start to believe it. They finally start to understand it and want to learn more about it. For me, it was, I can speak to this really on veganism. I had heard about veganism my entire life, but one day it just kind of clicked. I heard about it and I heard about how veganism can reduce your climate footprint. Still was a little skeptical, but then I started doing my own research. So I think the same thing applies here. Even if people don't believe right now, 
the more they hear about it, the more they might be willing to learn about it. So I hope that this was helpful and inspires you to write some letters today. Really, really hope so. If you want the full list of my tips, you can click down here for the full blog post version. And if you want some letter writing examples, companies I wrote to and follow my whole journey, you can follow me on TikTok. That's where I document in every single day of letter writing. Companies I wrote to, government I wrote to, helpful websites because there are so many helpful websites out there. I will leave some linked below with templates. All you have to do is plug in your zip code. It fills in all of your representatives, their emails, their names, and then already a pre-filled email. You literally just have to put in your zip code. You can add some personal details, but if, if you're lazy like me, it's so easy to get your voice out there. Less than a minute, I'm not even joking. So I hope this helps on your letter writing journey. What do you have to say for yourself? And I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, I really appreciate your time. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and let me know if I missed any valuable letter writing tips by leaving them down below. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe. I talk about all sorts of things, zero waste, but particularly free, easy, and fun ways to live low waste and practical ways to be an activist like letter writing. I forget her name off the top of my head and I don't know where my phone is, but there's this really, really helpful TikToker. I will leave it her channel right here and down below. She talks about pretty much exactly this, but with calling representatives. And she includes all the scripts on her blog, super helpful. She shows you how to call, how to sound professional. So, so helpful. So if you prefer calling over writing, you can do that or you can take her scripts and turn them into emails as well. So go check her out. And until next time, remember that your small actions have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. And that's because our patella... I don't even know what that word was supposed to be. Oh my gosh, you are such a baby. You want to say hi? Everybody loves you. Everybody loves you, Floof. What I learned is... Meow. Shut up, Mochi. Remember that you're small. What did I want to say? You're small. If you didn't catch my outro, it's different now. Instead of small changes, it's small actions because writing a letter isn't a change, it's an action. So I wanted to change up the verbiage a little bit to make it more inclusive to all, all sorts of actions. Does it, does it matter? <laughs> Am I really reading into this?